<laughs> Let's see what some of these detectors look like and we'll come back and talk about them. Scientists have created devices sensitive enough to detect the impact of a dark matter particle should one strike a single atom in its sensor. Unfortunately, it's noisy here on the Earth's surface. We are bombarded by cosmic rays and they do interact with regular matter, raining down a noisy shower that helps the detector, threatening to drown out what would be the quieter, almost completely silent impact from a dark matter particle. So scientists place these detectors where cosmic rays can't penetrate, far underground in abandoned mines and inside mountains. So far underground, there is no noise. Only then, when the atoms in the detector are nearly still, can scientists patiently wait for that almost imperceptible whisper of a dark matter particle strike. Detectors like Xenon and the Dama Libra work differently. They are made with atoms that will emit photons and sparkle with light if wimps strike them. Another method altogether is indirect detection. While dark matter doesn't give off light, the debris from two dark matter particles colliding might produce things we can detect, like gamma rays. The Fermi satellite has measured an excess coming from the direction of the center of our galaxy that may be caused by dark matter. Back on Earth, rather than waiting for dark matter particles to arrive from space, there's an experiment attempting to generate WIMPs from scratch by slamming protons together at nearly the speed of light. The violent head-on collisions convert this energy into showers of exotic particles scattering in all directions, perhaps within this debris, a short-lived dark matter particle will wink into existence. Do you go along with all those, by the way? As, uh... That's a great video. I was going to talk about the three ways to detect it. There they are. <laughs> there they are. Well, is the, uh, the first option, the, the deep in the mountains, deep in the mines, uh, very quiet, isolating something away from all other forces, is that something like the LIGO experiment to detect gravity waves where you've got something that on Earth is trying to detect something that's very, very difficult to detect, very, very sensitive, and so this you know, crazy kind of detector will, I mean, because that was successful. Well, the, yeah, these experiments, they are very difficult. So the count rate is, you know, if you have a kilogram of detector, then you're going to get, in a day, you might hope for one hit from one of these things, and, it's, and you have to get rid of all the competing signals that there's a lot more of. And then the amount of energy that's deposited when there is a hit is really, really tiny, so you have to be really clever to find that this event ever took place. So there, yeah, there, it requires really great sensitivity. So these experimentalists are awesome. So where do we stand in terms of, I mean, are they waiting? Are they still designing the software? Are the detectors so, sort oh, of being there's optimized? The, there's, um, this, the slide shows that uh, in the last 25 years, there's been an explosion of these detectors and the, this, the, that's where they are. So they're all over the world all, and all the different continents, including underneath the ice at the South Pole. And there's one, the Dama experiment, that's in Italy. It's underneath the Apennine Mountains, it's near Rome. The, the signals should go up and down with the time of year as the Earth moves around the sun. And that's exactly what they see. So they see more counts in June than, than they do in December. And they've got 10 years worth of cycles of this. So they're definitely seeing an annual modulation. But now the question is, is that from the dark matter or is that from something else?